A good user experience is the holy grail of an application. Because if the user likes the application, they're more likely to spend more time on the app, which makes them more likely to buy stuff from the application. However, most of us tend to fall short of a good user experience, and that results in us losing a lot of money, customers, and time. And so in this video, I just wanted to share three things that I do to improve the user's experience on the applications. And these go beyond the language. You can do this in any sort of application, web development, game development. So I hope you enjoy. So the first core principle of a good user experience is notifications. And by notifications, I don't mean any basic notification. I mean good notification system on your app. And this is what I mean by notifications, okay? Let's say we want to create a new course, right? Let's just call it JavaScript. A good user experience will tell the user what is going on when they do an action. We want to tell the user if their inputs or actions loaded correctly. So here we have a course description, right? Let's say we want to put in a course description. Let's just call it high like this, okay? We want a notification system to come in like this to tell the users that something went right or wrong. And I think a lot of us just tend to forget that notifications are an awesome way to allow users to be comfortable in the application, to know what's going on, and to update them on the situation of the application. And of course, to us developers, right, we know exactly how the application works, what's loading, what's not. But a user has no idea what is going on, why nothing's loading, why this is there, and why, you know, this part of the application looks like that. And by having notifications and good notifications, which we will cover how to get these cool ass notifications, is that we need to make it native to our application. And for the love of God, don't use these notifications in your apps. They are the Google like alert dot console logs. It just does not look native to your app. You want something that will look clean or however it fits with your application because your user will know that it's a part of the code rather than an outside weird thing. And to get notifications, you will probably want to use something like use toast or toast notifications where you just install it, you get it. And this one's from chat CNUI. And just look how it works. Look how nice this is. You get a scheduled, notification and the user knows what the hell is going on. This one is the easiest of the bunch. If you're not doing this, then I don't know what you're doing. I did not do this for a lot of my first few applications. It really hurt the amount of time my users spent on my app because they didn't know what was going on. And so just one more thing on the notifications and I'll show you the real power of it, okay? Let's say we're on this video over here. We, we're done watching the video and we wanna mark it as complete. It takes some time to load the data, you know, to send the, the API telling it that we completed it and to move on to the next video. So what this does is it allows us to load the next part of the app with a notification. And so what a notification does is it comes right away, right? We get the notification right away. And so it allows us in a way to get away with slower code or data that is being sent because the user knows that eventually something is going to pop up. So let's just press mark is complete to see what I mean. We get the progress updated over here and then we are loaded. That loading state, it takes some time because of the data sending back and forth and for everything to come into place. So by having that notification, it kind of allows us to spend more time or get away with slower code. And that actually goes perfectly into the next aspect of our good user experience and it is loading states and skeletons. If I can freaking spell, spell that right. So imagine this, okay? Let's say you went to the sandwich shop because you're hungry, you know, you want a good sandwich, a sub or something like that. However, you walk into the store and firstly, there is no one there to greet you. You stand there all awkwardly with your hands by your side and you're just like, what is going on here? You get confused, maybe a little bit anxious. And two minutes later, some lady walks in, greets you, and then takes your order. More likely than not, unless it's a really good sandwich shop, you will never go back there because of those sort of experiences. And why I'm talking about this weird freaking sandwich story is that in a lot of our applications, we just let the user stand there without them knowing a thing. You know, maybe we're sending data back and forth or we're doing something to call an API that takes some time and there's nothing on the screen that lets them know 
that the data is coming. And just like the notifications, we need to let the user know that they click the right thing and that something is going to happen as a result of their actions. And so to use this example again, right, let's say we clicked on this button. We can add a disabled or loading state to the button so that we disable it when the user clicks it so that they know, they know that something will happen as a result of them pressing it. So here's what I mean, okay? I'm going to zoom in a lot just so you can see. If we click this, you see how it's disabled? Actually, that wasn't too good of an example because we had to, uh, it does it pretty fast. So here's what I mean, okay? Let's say we, you know, create a new course like this. You can see a disabled state over there, right? I'll do it one more time just so you don't get confused. But look what happens when I press this button. It goes dark for a second. You saw that? If it took longer to load this course setup, it would stay darker for longer. And basically, we're just guiding the user throughout the app, okay? Here, for example, we have a disabled state, loading state, on the publish button. We're telling them that they cannot press this publish button unless they finish all the items in this app. I'm actually gonna zoom out because this is too much. I know these two steps, they don't really make sense and you might wanna go into more of the theoretical UI tricks and tips on building out you know, better user experience, but small things like this, a disabled button here, a loading state, a skeleton, which actually we can cover right now, just makes the user experience so much better and more comfortable. Because that's what we're trying to do at the end of the day, right? As developers, we don't want to be Gilberts that code basic applications. We want to actually make things that make a user enjoy and want to be in our apps. Having good loading states and notifications, stuff like that, just allows us to have a better user experience. And a skeleton, on the other hand, I have not used this in my most recent app, but they make sending data and stuff like that just awesome. So if you see over here, this is a skeleton state. You can see it's just a boilerplate replacement of what you're trying to load that is there instantaneously when you refresh. And a great example of this would be Instagram. Look at this, look at the loading state. You see this loading state here with the square? It took some time for the page to load. So what they did instead was rather than keeping you waiting in an empty page, they got the skeleton there right away and then loaded the data eventually, which would obviously take some time. And the final user experience tip that I think it's quite obvious, but I'm still going to talk about it, is the consistency we have with our applications and UI. You can have the best freaking notification system, the best loading states and skeleton states. However, if you don't have a consistent look and feel and functionality to your site, no one will want to stay on your app. And look, I left it to the end because I know if I talked about consistency at the beginning of the video, you would have clicked off because you know everything about consistency and it's like such an obvious tip. However, we forget that the basic understanding and basics of a user experience simply comes down to same look and feel. We want them to feel good about being with us. And if you look at production level apps, guys, like Amazon, actually I'm not gonna do Amazon because my freaking address is on it. <laughs> if we look at Twitter, for example, we can see a very consistent look to the app, not only in terms of visuals, but functionalities, okay? If I go to the explore page, I'm gonna get a loading state and then everything loads and it's the same font, the same sort of look and feel. If I go to maybe the notification or let's say the X premium page, I will have the same loading state with the things that fit in with the application. Same with the home page. Look how everything looks the same. If I want to answer a tweet here, it looks the same as if I want to answer a tweet or reply to a tweet here. And look, I know, I know that you want to skip this and don't want to listen, but without consistency, you will be a local host developer. We don't want to be local host developers. We want to build production level applications, nice applications, and this is an important aspect of it. And a good rule of thumb about consistency is, which I spelt wrong, let's see. It should be boring and repetitive as fuck to develop. What I mean by this is that you should be repeating things so much because you want it to be consistent that you eventually get bored. 
I got so bored developing this part of my application because it was the same to develop this input, this input, the image input. It was just, everything was the exact same and developing it, although it took a long time, it was just a very repetitive form of adding the same colors, adding the same loading states, adding the same API calls. And you know that you did a good job in my opinion, if it was kind of boring and repetitive to build out your app, it means you know what you're doing. So yeah, these are the three main things that I follow, these principles of a good user experience. Obviously there's way more to user experience, you know, there's other aspects to it. However, let your users know what's going on through notifications. Let them not sit in silence in a freaking sandwich shop without knowing what's going on by adding loading states and skeletons. And finally, keep the look as well as functionalities to your site consistent. By consistency, I mean loading states, pages, and even the design of the database and stuff like that. Hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, if you wanna join the Discord server where we have the best developer group, like we have an awesome community of like-minded individuals, people starting businesses, you know, hanging out. It's just an awesome place for new developers who want to learn and improve because there's so many of us. I will leave the Discord channel down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It would really go a long way. Happy coding, good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.